somebody want to light the beacons? Johnny boy, we are lighting the beacons. Gondor is calling for aid. The southern fiefs must ride to the defense of the White City. So, this project all started when I was rummaging about my old white dwarf archives. Found many an old army book and codex in this pile as well. The one that caught my attention was White Dwarf 295. This was released in July 2004, that makes me feel very old. I think I've spent over half my life in this hobby now, which is quite a scary thing to think about. So this White Dwarf issue contains all the original fiefdom conversions that Games Workshop done. There's some really cool ones in here, like the original Clansman and Angbor. I think they use the old Dunlin models, which looks fantastic. There's also a number of other fiefdoms that really catch my eye that GW unfortunately never made full lines of miniatures for. It got me thinking, most of these fiefdoms have leaders as well, so I thought it wouldn't it be cool to convert up a leader and his warband and challenge some other friends to do so as well. In the Return of the King book, a lot of these fiefdoms send warriors to Minas Tirith to help fight in the Battle of the Pelennor. And one night after a few too many whiskies, I thought it would also be a great idea to email Zorpazorp about sending some of these fiefdom conversions to fight in his absolutely incredible Minas Tirith build. And surprisingly enough, he responded with a yes. So this supports my running theory that all your best made plans are when you're having a swally in the pub. Alright, I am JMAX Armies of Middle Earth and I have done Pinneth Gellin. I am Cameron, also known as Paints on a 4-Up, and I have done the Ether Anduin. I'm Nick from Windish Wargamers, and I've done the Ringlo Veil. Vale. And I'm Joe from Windish Wargamers, and I cheated and did Rondor as opposed to a proper fiefdom. Oh well, there's always one. Yeah, I know. Not take me anyway. <laughs> Well, who's this? All right, but we were just chatting about uh, the fiefdoms we were going to do. Which one are you going to take? Can I go Rustavold? Rustavold's not a f***ing fiefdom, you had after. Well, f*** you then. Charming as always. Yeah, I don't know what's the matter with him, to be honest. So, I have gone for Pinneth Gellin, and as always in my videos, I'm going to start with a little bit of lore, just to fill you in. So Gondor's eastern fiefdoms are the most populated. This includes Lasarnock, Lamadon, and Lebenin. I love the idea of doing a Lebenin force in the future, but unfortunately they didn't send any troops to the Pelennor as they were too busy dealing with the Corsairs and the siege of the Pelagir. And as a Scot, I am going to do a full Lamadon army in the future. I'm going to aim for about 1200 points of Lamadon and you'll see how I make that illegal army in a future video. But anyway, let's get on to the topic of this video, Pinneth Gellin, or translated the Green Hills. Sundered as it is from both the Erid Nimras and the Bay of Belfalis by many leagues, it is a rare thing for either Orcs or Corsairs to set foot upon the Green Hills. However, due to their nature as a big trading partner, they still need to keep a sizeable force to protect their trade caravans. Although being quite inexperienced in battle, they do have some of the best equipment available to them due to all the money they get from trade. But what really drew me to this fiefdom was their leader, Herluin the Fair. Herluin had had a vision of his death before the walls of the White City. However, despite this, when the beacons were lit, he decided to go to Minas Tirith anyway, along with 300 of the best warriors he could muster. After a long and arduous journey through the southlands of Gondor, Herluin and his men finally arrived at the White City. In the following days, Herluin and many of his followers would fall in the great battle outside the city walls, never to see the beautiful green hills of their homeland again. Oh, oh, well I got awfully heavy didn't it, oh, anyway. So this fantastic image here from the Rise of Mordor mod for Total War is what I'm going to try and replicate. I just love the kind of ragtag look of all different types of equipment. By the end of the day they still look distinctly Gondorian. So to do this, the obvious starting port is the Gondorian kit by Games Workshop. These models hold a special place in my heart because they are the first models I ever owned from Games Workshop, so it pains me to cut them up into little bits to help convert up some fiefdoms troops. To get the padded armour, I'm going to use the Conquest Norman kit. 
you only get one padded armor per sprue, but luckily it's only 20 quid for 44 guys. Do you fancy taking note of that? Pricing model games workshop. Well, the first guy we're going to try and do is the one on the right using the Fireforge Games Western Knight Sprue. So the first and easiest part of this project is to cut out the knight's body and glue it down to a base. I then start to file down the top of his right shoulder. This is so I can get a better fit for the Minas Tirith right spear arm. As there was a little bit of a gap, I did mix up some green stuff and use that to stick the arm in place. Next up was the hardest part, it was to cut the Gondorian head off the Minas Tirith guy. The best way to do this is to start from the lip at the back and push through a little bit before switching to the front and pushing down on the cutting mat to cut through. As you can see, I completely failed when I tried to film this. I got a bit distracted because it took a lot of effort to push through the neck and cut off the head. Again, just a little bit of filing before gluing the head on with some plastic glue. Next up was quite easy, I just glued on the chainmail arm from the knight sprue. So shields. For this I went to Guardians of Wiltshire who has this fantastic catalogue. You could print off actually any bit you could ever imagine for Middle Earth. It's shields and banners for every single different fiefdom which is fantastic. So I decided to pick up some Pinneth Gellin ones and a banner. This was then simply super glued onto the shield arm of the miniature. Try not to get super glue all over his back like I did. And with that our first miniature is done. So next up, I'm going to give the guy on the left a try. To do this, I start by cutting apart one of the Norman shields before replacing it with one of the Guardians of Wiltshire 3D prints. Unfortunately, I lost the footage, but all I did was give him a Gondorian spear and a Gondorian head in the same manner as the previous guy. Now, before I stick the shield arm on, I want to make sure I get this cloth thing around his neck done properly. And to do that, I'm going to mix up some green stuff in my green water. Now, the last major project I did any green stuffing on was my old Morgoth conversion, which was about two years ago, so I'm feeling quite rusty at the moment. I have to say, I am quite annoyed at myself, because during my Morgoth project, I actually got quite good at green stuffing. It was a skill as a teenager I never thought I'd be able to master, but I actually got some really good results with my Morgoth. But then, because of the amount of effort I put into it, I got kind of sick of green stuff and I haven't done anything since. So I think I lost all my skill that I'd built up over the project. Now, I know a lot of other channels get perfect green stuff results first time. What I'm going to show you is how many mistakes I made trying to do something as simple as a little bit of cloth around his neck. So my first attempt, I just tried to cut a circle out of it with my craft knife. And you can see how well that went. Attempt number two, I decided to put a head hole through it first and then just put it over the miniature and then cut it. As you can see, this attempt was also a complete and abject failure. Again, this is the third attempt, complete and utter mince. It was at this point I realised I was being a complete and utter idiot, so nothing new. Um, I decided that I didn't actually need to poke a hole through the green stuff and that I could just take the guy's head off, put a bit of cloth down and that would be that. Then finally, after another two attempts trying to get the size right, I finally managed it. Just trim a bit of the green stuff away and pop his head on and we're good to go. Just going to use my modelling tool to kind of smooth out any kind of fingerprints etc on the green stuff. And with that, I can glue the shield arm on and we're done. You know, a lot of these channels I watch online are just creative gods and they can make green stuff things perfect first time, you know, whereas I find that quite unrealistic to benchmark myself against because I'm a complete pie, you know, I can't do these kind of things first time. You know, look how, look how many attempts it took me to green stuff a simple bit, a cloth around the guy's neck. But I just want to show you that if you put the time and the effort in and you try and try again, you will get there and your armies can have some awesomely green stuff conversions in as well. Next up, I wanted to give a Minas Tirith guy a padded lower half. This should have been quite simple and just chopping the two figures in half and joining them together. But as usual, I made a complete arse of it and chopped too much off the top half. So I had to use a lot of green stuff to kind of blend them together. I just tried to make it look like he had a giant belt on. It was this point I realised my desk was getting a bit manky so I decided to have a bit of a tidy up. 
now that I'd done four of the core infantry guys, I kind of wanted to do something a bit different. I wanted to give Herloin two really fancy bodyguards. I wanted them to be a bold and imposing elite guard for Herloin. Like a really famous double act in the realm that everybody knows the names of. Chris the Dunk. Oh, look who it is. Batman and Robin. Well, accept that as long as you go cat women, you pussy. <laughs> However, when I was paint stripping one of them, the sword fell down the sink, so I'm going to have to give him a new sword. I wouldn't normally pin these, but because they're going in the post, I thought it would be a good idea to do so. So all I did was drill a hole into his hand before putting in some brass rod. Once the brass rod was dried, I cut it just above the hilt and then drilled a hole in the sword side. These were then glued together to give a really sturdy join and I hope these don't break anytime soon. And then the easiest bit, just glue on one of the fantastic shields from Guardians of Wiltshire. So that's those two done, uh, they'll just be a left hand and a right hand man. So next up, the main man himself, Herloin. So I had this old Asildor model that I had a couple of duplicates of and I thought it'd be perfect for this. I'm a bit worried about chopping through a metal miniature's head but let's give it a bash. It took me a good couple of chops to get it through but I eventually made it. I then filed his neck joint to make it nice and smooth. Next up was the head. Normally I don't go for unhelmeted stuff because no self-respecting warrior would leave his helmet off during a battle. But something about the fountain court guard head was just a bit too big and the other ones I had handy didn't work. And you know, as he's hurling the fair, maybe he wants to show off his dashing good looks. So I thought it might be a good idea to use the unhelmeted Aomer head that I had spare. I had to cut a chunk out of his hair to fit over his shoulder. The head isn't an exact fit. I did try to pin it, but I made an arse of that as well, so I just filled it in with some green stuff. I tried on a few different cloaks for him. I had some Fireforge Knight ones, but I thought they felt a bit too short. So I ended up going for the same ones I used on my Numenorians, the Patrician Cloaks from Anvil Games. I then decided the best course of action was to stick his head and the cape on at the same time before using some green stuff to blend his hair into the back of the cape. Once the green stuff was hardened a little bit, I took my hobby knife and cut grooves into the green stuff along the same lines as the hair on the head. The result isn't perfect, but I'm hoping when it's all painted up it will look fine. So, I know I said I was going to do a wee tidy up, um, It's not really happened. It kind of tends to happen when I'm working with a million kits, I just fucking chuck stuff everywhere. I'm still undecided on what to do with the banner. Um, I was thinking using a Lendio to fit with the seal door, but then I thought that would be the absolute fanciest banner bearer ever. Um, and for a little fiefdom, I'm not sure that makes sense. I then thought about I might do Aragon carrying the banner. I think that might look quite cool, um, but I'd probably want to change his head. But that looks like it might be quite hard with all the 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 hair, but I think I'm going to give it a bash, guys. I'm going to give it a bash. Oh, and also, I want the green stuff like a crown on his head, but I'm a bit... don't know if I can do that. So, now for the scary bit, we're going to try to do the banner. I decided I was just going to cut through Aragon's head and sword in one go, and hopefully be able to drill in the banner quite easily. Once the head and sword was off, I gave it a quick file as usual just to smooth it out. Up next was getting my hand drill and a correct drill bit. I then had to drill one big hole through the two hands and I had to do it perfectly so the banner would line up properly. Surprisingly, I actually managed to do this first time without cocking it up, which was brilliant. Look at that sliding action there. I did end up managing to squeeze the banner pull down over his leg, which made it look a lot more in proportion. Then the simplest bit was just gluing on a Minas Tirith boy's helmet. But just as I thought I'd finished this awesome conversion, if I don't say so myself, disaster struck. Oh! 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 Oh, why? 
So sad. Unfortunately, fixing this was an absolute nightmare. I had to glue the ruined banner onto the side of some brass rod and fill it in with a load of green stuff. This took multiple attempts of filing and refilling until I got to a stage where I'd unfortunately ran out of time and I just had to get on with it and start painting. I did want to put a topper on my banner and I found this really nice coronate banner. I think this will fit in perfectly with the fiefdom's troops. I'm only joking. What I really went for was one of these old Bretonian helmets. I cut the stag iconography off the top. I thought this would look pretty cool. After that, I went on to finish off all the other troops. So here's a picture of all the completed miniatures I have so far. These are just going to get a quick black base coat. I then decided to do one of these zenithly highlights that all the cool kids are doing these days. Probably shouldn't be trialling this on such an important project, but I really can't be fucked highlighting up white from black, so we're just going to give it a bash, shall we? So now that everything's base coated, it's time to do a trial run of the colour scheme I'm going for. Done a wee test there. Um, I don't know if it's because I've been speed painting armies for the last couple of videos um, and not really take my time, or if it's because these are the ones going to Minas Tirith in Australia, uh, I seem to have forgotten how to paint and paint things nice. I'm just so used to speed painting that I've, I've just forgot how to actually paint something that could win a competition. I definitely have lost a lot of skill in painting from when I was younger, I used to be a lot better. Uh, I just, I don't have the skill or patience anymore. I just like to smash out armies as fast as I can. So, for example, this is my fine detail brush. I can't remember the last time I used it. That's not a fine detail brush. What is it? That's my fine detail brush. It's the only one that isn't absolutely ruined out of the whole set. So I think that shows you my kind of modern philosophy in painting things. So enough of the depressing monologue. Let's get on to painting, shall we? First step up is a base coat of Caliban Green. We then move on to a first coat of Warpstone Glow. So most people would do two thin coats to get a nice coverage, but I'm very lazy. I rely on the wash to cover up most of the imperfections in the coat. Speaking of which, I use Beltan Wash to give the whole coat a covering. This will kind of go into the recesses and create some lovely shading across the coat, while also covering up the imperfections in the last coat. Nice coat. As you can see, this has toned the miniature down, so we need to highlight it back up. To do this, I'm going to dry brush with a 50-50 mix of Moot Green and Warpstone Glow. I am being really messy here because I know I'm going to have to come back and fix mistakes later on, so don't worry about this looking perfect just now. Now for the armour, I use my usual 1-2 combo. Mithril Silver, Null Noil Wash, Dry Brush Mithril Silver. I find the result from this simple procedure to be really good. It takes no time at all and gives a good result. You know, one day I'll maybe try non-metallic metal, but it is not this day. As you can see, I have made mistakes with the silver going over the green, so I will go back and fix that at the end. So now I use Rhinox Hide to give a base coat to all the leather, wood and skin. Speaking of skin, I give this a quick base tone of Cadian Flesh. But then I thought I want a bit of contrast on this miniature because if it's entirely green, silver and white it's going to be a bit boring. To do that I thought I would give the wooden spears and the leather a different tone of brown to what I usually do. So I went with XV88 to give it a kind of nice yellowy contrast to the green. Then it's a quick wash of Reichland flesh on the skin. I then used Murnfang brown to cover the base like I usually do, followed by the gloves and his boots. I then highlight the face with Cadian Flesh Tone again. Once this was dry, I do a final edge highlight on the most pronounced areas of the face with some Flayed One Flesh mixed in with the Cadian Flesh Tone. I then go back to XV88 to highlight the belt back up and the spear shaft. I then decided to mix in some Flayed One Flesh with the XV88 to give a final edge highlight to the belt and other leather areas I've used XV88 on. Again, I use the exact same process on the leather gloves and the feet. I go back over it with Moonfang Brown before mixing in a little bit of Flayed One Flesh to edge highlight the details. I then go back to the Warpstone Green to fix all the imperfections. I then make sure to leave the recesses shaded to create some definition across the miniature. Finally, mixing in a little bit of Moot Green again to do the final edge highlight.
I then remembered there was a little bit above the boot that I had to do white, so that was simply a base coat of Administratum Green before highlighting it with Ceramite White. Now I kind of wanted to tie these in a bit more to the Gondor theme, so I decided to do some freehand on the back. So I stenciled out a kind of rough tree from the Administratum Grey. before highlighting it with the cinematic white. Of course when you're doing freehand and make a mistake you can always go back over it with the original base layer colour. Now finally the base, I just use my usual combo of Geek Gaming Cmix, touch up the rim and then some nice Tajima 1 tufts. I use some kind of purple and pink heathery type flowers just to give a bit of contrast to the green on the miniature. And with that we're done, we can add him in with the rest of the troops. So for Herloin's guards, there isn't really much difference. However, I wanted them to be a bit more imposing than my standard rank and file troops. I really like the armour I did on my Rog in the Hammers of Wrath, so I decided to try and copy that for these guys. All it is, is a pure black armour with a nice gold trim. You have to be really careful when doing the gold trim, but any mistakes can be fixed with more black. Now, rather than highlighting black armour normally, I like to give it a gloss coat so the real life light does the work for you and you don't need to highlight it. I think this gives a really good black armour effect. And with them done, we'll just add them in. Now, Herloman himself was painted exactly the same as everyone else, except I gave him some fancy gold armour and some red gems, along with some fancy fancy freehand stuff all over his cape and clothes. Despite Royal Mail's best efforts, I finally managed to get some Medbury heads which were printed by Forge Master Minis. I used these to replace the two night helmets I'd used, as I wanted all my miniatures to be consistent with the Gondorian theme. Right, I know this video's been long enough and you're probably all bored out your tits, but uh, neat top rules. I'm gonna design a couple of wee cards for these just so you know what to play with. So to do that, I just set up some terrain and did a couple of glamour shots with the guys. Opened up my Lothlorien templates from my previous tutorial video and edited in the stats and the photos I just took. So Herloin will be just a king of men, but I put him up 5 extra points and I made up a rule called Premonition of Death. Herloin will pass all courage checks as long as there's a point of fate remaining. I think there's mechanics in the game and I thought it would make some cool decisions on whether or not to use your fate or to keep it for a stand fast roll or even to charge a monstrous creature. The warriors of Pinneth Gellin will just use the same profile as the Minas Tirith guys. I think the shield wall fits them quite nicely, defend and trade. Couldn't think of a better name, so I called these the Green Guard. Um, they'll just be fountain court guys, same as, except they won't. T just don't take the spear, so you just use the sword. They get swords, don't they? I'll need to check that. Heavy armor, dagger, and a spear. Oh, they have to take a spear. I thought they just had swords. I'm sure they used to have swords. Let's have a look. Let's consult the tome. Guard of the foot doesn't even have a picture. Oh, they didn't even have a dagger back then. I must have. I must have just made that up. I'm sure they had swords. Oh well, they just have very long daggers. Now, the very end of the video, I need to send these off to the White City, and I have to say I've got very attached to my Green Hills, and as a hoarder, I'm going to find this. Find it very hard to say goodbye to these. I kind of want to do a full army of them now. Who am I to reject the steward's call? So with that, it's time to say my final goodbyes. Pack these up and ship them off to the White City. Now I just want to say thank you to Paints and Windrush. When I invited them to do this, I only had about 20 subscribers. So thank you for accepting this challenge. So definitely go check out what they've done on their channels. I'll put some links in my description. Here's just a quick sneak peek of their fiefdoms. And of course, a huge thank you to the Zork for entertaining my silly little project and sending us that awesome intro video. <coughs> Scotland's better than New Zealand. <coughs> oh, something in my throat there. And with the Royal Mail's recent track record, I wouldn't put it past them to lose this package, but fingers crossed the Fiefdom's troops actually make it to the White City to defend the world of men. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And Remember to give my bell a good old ring. Wow. Oh, look who it is. Bill and Ben. 
two whiskies, you flubber dubbin nubbin. <laughs> right, how do I turn 50 minutes, actually over an hour of utter mince into a thought provoking and engaging video that won't bore people to death? I am so out of my depth here. Oh Jesus, look at that. Now that's a face for radio. That actually improves things, doesn't it? <gasps> Bucky! What have you been looking at in the laptop? Caught right in the act. Look at that, look at shame. Shame. Dirty bastard. <laughs> I'm not slapping myself because I've made a mistake. I'm sinking my audio. I've only got one hand. You know, maybe one day I'll try non 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 metallic <laughs> non metallic metal. <laughs> and of course, a huge thank to you, Zor. A huge thank. A huge thank. One, one big thank. Eh, God, I'm terrible at this.